Welcome to Whiskey's a Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano. And today, I think I am nearing the end of my top five scotch series. I need to hear from you. Let me know if you want me to do one more video with my scotches that deals with odd age statements and or non-age stated single malt scotches, non-peated single malt scotches. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm toying with the idea of doing that or not. If you are new here, this is what I've been doing. I've been taking a selection of four or five or six bourbons, unpeated scotches, and peated scotches. I've been tasting them, ranking them, and then the winner of each of these flights is going to be moving on to my finals. And those finals, based on my scheduling, I think is gonna come up at the end of February. So let me know in the comments down below if you wanna see an, a non-age stated, unpeated scotch, and an odd, aged stated unpeated scotch video let me know in the comments down below okay let's get on to today's video i'm going to be doing my older non-peated scotches i'm talking about 18 years and older and i only have four of them they're all naturally presented i believe they're all naturally presented so let's go ahead and jump into it bottle number one and glass number one Tomatin 18 is coming in a 46% ABV, non-chill filter, natural color. I believe the maturation of this is going to be oak and first fill Oloroso sherry butts. That's going to be in glass number one. I have it labeled on the bottom. Once I get everything here, I'm going to mix it up and then we'll get this thing going. Bottle number two, Glenmarie 18. This is coming in at 47.2% ABV, non-chill filtered, and I'm not sure about natural color here. It doesn't say anything on the bottle, but... It's Graham Cool, and this is when he used to work at uh, Glen Murray, so I think maybe it is natural color. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments down below. And this is matured in First Fill American Oak. Sorry, Tomatin. I paid $114 for the Glen Murray. I paid $99.99. So that's glass number two. Let's go with bottle number three. I have another 18-year-old, and this is going to be Duncan and Taylor. This is coming from the Altmore Distillery. This is an independent bottler coming in at 42% ABV, natural color, non-chill filter. It, I do believe it says it on the box, but I got rid of the box a long time ago. And I also think that this is matured in oak casks. So I do believe these are the ex-bourbon oak. And then the other two and my last one, bottle number four, is also going to be uh, a maturation of sherry as well. I hope that made sense. Here's glass number three and then bottle number four. We're looking at Aaron 21, 46% ABV, natural color, non-chill filter, and this is gonna be matured in a combination of ex-bourbon and ex-Oloroso sherry. The Altmore was $179, and then the Aaron was $289. So those are the four that I am dealing with. Got the fourth glass out here. Let's clear this thing out of here, mix it up, and then get on with the video. All right, so as these things are mixed up, um, I went back to the black Glen Cairns that I couldn't really see through because I do believe the sherry cask matured Aaron 21 and the Tomatin 18 are a little bit darker than all of the others. So I didn't want that to give anything away. And I also have a Glen Farkless 25, but that is below 46%. I do know that they are natural color, but I do think there is some chill filtration happening. So I left that out of this, even though the Glen Murray 18 also might have coloring in it, but I wasn't sure. But I also wanted just to get the four and go from there. There's a whole ton of malt sweetness already jumping out of the glass. You know what they are because they're all listed right here. I'm gonna go from my right to left this time nose them, taste them, and then go back the other direction, speed it up, and then come up with my ranking. This is fruity sweet. Malt, citrus, peaches, pineapple, vibrant, fresh, and crisp. Let's go ahead and get it on the palate. Yeah, that's great. It, it basically tastes like you're walking through an orchard with citrus and apples and pears, and you're just eating out of the basket as you're going. Pretty good amounts of ABV. Crisp, well put together, vibrant on the nose, vibrant on the palate. All right, glass number two. Much softer on the nose. Maybe I'm getting a little bit of the sherry notes in here. 
These are darker fruits. Plums, figs, dates, raisins. Smells fantastic. If you've been here on this channel for a while, you know that I like sherried whiskeys. Watch this not be sherried, but I'm, that's what I'm getting, the dark fruit notes. Good amount of malt, not a whole lot of ABV. Let's get it on the palate. Yeah, very well-rounded, nice construction. It hits the front of the palate pretty sweet. You end up getting the dark raisins. Once it hits the mid palate, it kind of rounds out, coats every inch of the tongue, sinks down to the side. I'm getting a little bit of good ABV in the back of the uh, throat area. It's not overpowering. It's definitely not as strong as this one, but I like it. This is a very easy sipper that's pretty full bodied. I like the flavors that are coming out of here. All right, moving on to glass number three. Okay, not getting much. Okay, glass three, not much is coming out of here. Softer fruits, lighter fruits, not softer fruits, just lighter fruits. I'm not getting the figs, dates, raisins, and plums, and I'm not getting the vibrancy that I'm getting from glass number one, those orchard fruits, the pineapple. Pineapple's not orchard, but the citrus, the apple, the pear, those types of fruits. Let's go ahead and get it on the palate. Nice and delicate. Fruity, sweet, good amount of malt, very well-rounded, very soft on the palate, crisp, clean, decent ABV. Now let's go ahead and move on to glass number four. Glass number four, there's a lot of vanilla. It's also very similar to glass number one, just knocked down again 50%. I have an idea of what this one is just because of the high ABV, but man, this is vanilla pear apple malty sweet yeah smells really good let's get it on the palate oh man that's really soft as well all of these are so well rounded nothing sharp whatsoever fruity sweet good amounts of vanilla a little bit of pineapple not as much apple and pear as i got in the first one but that's really good as well now it's going to be interesting going back the other direction, A, B, C, D, compare these things. I'm gonna speed this part up. I'm gonna get my little notebook, take some notes. And when I get back, I should have my order. All right, I am back. This was an interesting matchup with the four high aged single malts. Knowing that there were two sherry matured single malts in here, along with two X bourbon. I really could not pinpoint one of the sherry barrels or one of the sherry glasses. One of them stu stood out more than anything. And that one reminded me more of the Tamdu 15. It was extremely cask forward with the sherry. And I liked it, but I think it was a little bit too much. The other three were pretty well balanced and the margin between my first place and my fourth place is very thin. So let me go ahead and jump to my fourth place and let you know why I chose this as fourth. My last glass, glass number four, I put in fourth place. There are really good light fruit notes in here. I get a good amount of vanilla. There's a slight amount of spice in here and I pinpointed that spice to like a, a ginger spice. And because of that ginger spice, it didn't quite fit into what I felt were the other fruit notes in here. They just didn't meld very well. So that ended up, that ended up going into my fourth place. My third place going to the opposite side was glass number four just elevated a little bit. In fact, glass number one reminded me a lot of the compass box orchard house. It was that vibrant. And this by far was the most vibrant on the nose and on the palate. All of those notes that I had at the very beginning, my on my first tasting and my first nosing, it was basically walking into an orchard. Pick your orchard. Citrus, apple, pear, doesn't make a difference. All of that is in this glass along with a good amount of ABV. Everything was well-rounded, but then again, the spice that I got in glass number four showed up a little bit in glass one as well. And there was a, a little bit of a pepper, a little bit of a 
ginger and to me that ginger and pepper spice didn't necessarily fit into the vibrancy of those fruit notes as well. So that ended up being in my third place. In second place, I have glass number two. And the reason why I put glass number two in second place is I do believe for me and my personal taste during this flight, it was a little bit too cask forward. And I'm crazy for saying this because I know how much I like figs, dates, raisins, and plums, but the cask on this one seemed to mask the actual taste of the whiskey. And it didn't seem to be as well-rounded as my first place glass, which was glass number three. And when I'm saying that glass number two wasn't as well-rounded, I need to compare, I needed to compare these two side by side and there just seemed to be more development in glass three than there was in glass two. I wrote down here, this was cask heavy. I got chocolate along with raisins, dates, figs, and plums, but those raisins, dates, figs, and plums was a little bit too overwhelming, which put glass number three ahead of it. And to me, based on all four of these glasses, glass number three ended up being the most balanced, the most complex, the better constructed of the other three. Not only could I taste the raisins, dates, and figs, and plums, it was underlined by vanilla and citrus and a little bit of pineapple and that malty sweet note. Everything that was in this glass or is in this glass, you can taste. You can spend some time with it, relax with it, dissect it. It seemed to be the most well-constructed and that's why I end up putting glass number three in first place. So in fourth place, I was drinking the Glenmurray 18. All right, Glenmurray 18 is really good and especially for the price, I believe this is a pretty good bargain for an 18 year old. If you haven't had it and you bypass this on the shelf, I think this is this is worth the $100 investment. It's not really an investment because you're drinking it, but I think this is worth $100, especially for the age statement. So glass number one, I put in my third place, and this is the Duncan Taylor 18. I'm gonna actually throw this into my sample pool. I'm gonna put the Duncan Taylor 18 along with the Orchard House into my sample pool. And when that battle bottle comes up, it's gonna be interesting to see how these two play out in an expensive bottle and a relatively affordable bottle. And I really do like that Orchard House quite a bit. So third place, Duncan Taylor 18. And the, I do, again, believe this is coming out of the Altmore Distillery. In my second place, I ended up putting, all right, this makes total sense. So the uh, Tomatin 18, the Tomatin 18, Tamdu 15, very, very similar. I'm also gonna throw these two in my sample pool to do a battle bottle because they are very, very similar. Which leaves my first place and moving on to my Scotch finals is going to be the Aaron 21. I recently picked this one up at the end of December of 2023, I believe this was the last bottle that I purchased in 2023. I bought it for a present to myself, and this does not disappoint. I really do like the complexity, how it's well-rounded, how you can taste all the little individual notes from sip to sip. It's gonna be interesting to see how this finishes in my 2024 Scotch Whiskies of the Year. Right now, I know it's brand new of 2024, but this is definitely in the running for my Scotch whiskey, my non-peated Scotch whiskey of the year for 2024. One last thing left to do, do a blend, and then we'll call this video good. All right, so again, Duncan and Taylor, Tomatin 18, Aaron 21, Just a little bit more of this. I'm looking at the color as I'm pouring these things in the glass, and there's definitely a color difference with all of these. And then the Glen Marie 18. This is a good time to let you know, if you are not subscribed to this channel and you like this information, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Just click on that little link right there. If you've had any four of these, let me know in the comments down below what you think of them. If by chance you've ever had these in a blind flight, how did they rank with you? And again, if you wanna see two more Scotch videos 
or depending upon what I have in my collection, I might put together my odd age stated scotches along with my non age stated scotches into one video. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd be interested in seeing that or if you want me to finish the series up and go right to my scotch, my non peated scotch finals. I'd be interested to hear from everybody. All right, let's see how this is on the nose. I think those orchard fruits from the Altmore from the Duncan and Taylor independent bottler is jumping out of the glass the most. And it could be a combination of the Glen Murray and the Altmore. Very citrus, very appley forward, very malt forward. And the ABV is stinging the nose a little bit, very sweet. And there is a good amount of pepper, pepper spice coming from the glass. All right, let's get it on the palate. Wow. 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 That is, that is really good. That might, that might be the best blend I've done up to this point. All of the subtle sherry notes that you're getting from the Aaron and the Tomatin are here. You get a boost in the ABV from the Duncan Taylor. There's a good amount of malt and a really good amount of sweetness. Those orchard fruits. Wow. This is out of left field. Had no idea this is going to be that good. All right. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Wherever you're at in your journey, I hope you're enjoying it because I am certainly enjoying mine. And until the next time, cheers, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Hmm. That's good.